You just heard from Abdullah Minyawi and the Karl Gari Trio, a collaboration which unites the worlds of poetry and electronic music, artistic traditions from Egypt and Germany, and much more besides. Abdullah and Jonas of the trio join us in the studio to tell us more about this creative meeting of minds. Hi, guys. Now, you've just released the album Between the Bullet and the Front Sight, Casting Lots, and we're going to come to that in just a second. I want to hear more about it. But of course, coverage of the situation in Ukraine is dominating events here at France 24. As artists, as citizens, how does it feel to be witnessing what's happening there? Brings me back to uh, Egypt and the revolution. And yeah, it's just uh, provoking something inside me. Um, something comes from this region and yeah, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm observing everything with uh, sadness and with the hope that it's uh, over soon. And yeah, with uh, yeah, that's all. Sadness. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. It's very, it's a big tragedy. Um, I also know that in Ukraine there was a very progressive music scene that developed, uh, electronic music scene also that developed in the last uh, eight to ten years maybe. And so there were, were many uh, bridges built, many connections, and yeah, it's, it's very sad and very shocking. No one would have thought, I guess, really. Yeah. Mm, it feels very close here in Europe, of course. Uh, our live coverage of the war in Ukraine will continue after this programme. Now, to come back to arts and music now, I wanted to ask you about this latest record. It comes from a live filmed performance, and it's normally the other way around. You make a record, then you... Perform. Can you tell us about the birth of this record? Um, it started with an um, offer from a festival, from an online festival called um, Rewire. And they, um, they couldn't do their regular festival because of the pandemic. And so they asked us to do a film performance, basically. And from there, things developed and, yeah. Okay, well, one of the tracks on that album, which I must admit feels quite politically and socially charged, was called Hajj. Let's take a listen. Now, that does sound just sonically quite dark. Abdullah, can you take us through some of the themes there, how much they're influenced by the world around you? Uh, this one, especially, it's a, it's a, it's a story of uh, someone who witnessed an accident and then lost the traces. This is the, the, the phrases I'm singing in this one. And uh, for me, uh, it was absolutely related to the Egyptian revolution. And uh, yeah, it's kind of metaphoric uh, uh, way to look at it after all, like an accident that that left no traces after all. So yeah, uh, I'm connected emotionally to these uh, sounds and, uh, and it's really natural. It's uh, not uh, something that I try to provoke or to search for it inside, just like that's how I think and how I feel. Now, I noticed the cover art for this record features quite a striking image. It, I certainly noticed it. I found it quite arresting. Can you tell us more about that choice? <laughs> it was uh, a scene from a film I played the main character in. It's called Lamis, and it was uh, premiered in uh, Festival du Can uh, uh, 2019. So, yeah, just, uh, I just came up with the idea. I proposed it to the guys, and, uh, and yeah, like... Uh, 
it was a hard decision to to bring this photo out, but uh, this this uh, scene out. But uh, thanks to Alaa Din, the filmmaker too, who, who just gave us the the copyrights for free. And yeah, uh, for me, it's just again like uh, uh, you are looking at a new birth, simply and metaphorically. That birth can carry the future and destiny. So <laughs> it's something growing with us. That's that's for me the the, the artwork. A powerful idea there. Now, I know that with your fellow musicians, Till Funke and Jonas Friedlich, uh, the four of you have been working together for a while now, more than five years, and your mini album from 2019 was applauded by, by the music press, especially a track that I'd like to listen to. It translates to the act of falling from the eighth floor. Let's hear some of that. <laughs> لا يخلو الأمر من مزالق هبوط الطابق السادس علقت قبتي علقت قبتي تأرجحت في الهواء كسرت القابض كان الحي على فوهته الكل يتسابق ضمن أنني صار now, Abdullah, I think that the lyrics there relate directly to Egyptian society. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the headspace you were in when you were writing that? I was so frustrated and on the edge, to be honest, like uh, just looking at everything, just uh, collapsing after these dreams and desire of the revolution and change, basically. And then, like, yeah, I was in this, uh, in my apartment back then uh, on the eighth floor, just uh, feeling so tired of like okay shall i jump <laughs> or shall i just uh, carry on and then like uh, the poem for me just uh, uh, offered me this experience without really living it so i described just the, the building but i would like uh, actually to listen to your point of view uh, about this uh, this track too mm, my point of view my first impression was uh, immediately i i saw it very um Cinematically, yeah, um, yeah, the the fall and the this kind of slow motion fall, yeah, is for me, yeah, the the strongest image on on the album for sure, yeah. Yeah, it's certainly very evocative in terms mm. of what's happening there dramatically. Now we're going to look at some new releases now, starting with pianist, producer, songwriter, and singer Robert Glasper. The polymath musician has released the album Black Radio 3, featuring the neo-soul, R&B, jazz and hip-hop blend he's known for. The record features a roster of high-profile guest artists, including Killer Mike, Q-Tip, Gregory Porter and Jennifer Hudson. Here's a taste with the single Black Superheroes. If I was facing death and I could ask one thing of God, I would ask for every nigga to be free here and abroad. And to be rightfully celebrated as a child of God. And to be rightfully celebrated as a child of God. So as we can see there, rap, R&B, very successful in the mainstream. And it does seem the dominant mode of expression when it get, comes to getting out social, political messages. But you're working with poetry. And I wanted to know from both of you, writing it, working with it musically, how does poetry, a literary style, bring a new dimension to the music? Um, I, I mean, I can't say much about his poetry. Um, uh, because I'm not writing it, but um, I'm not creating it, so to say. Um, but um, I can say something about our workflow, and uh, maybe it's uh, yeah, it's very uh, it's very open. We usually meet in a very uh, remote house in the Bavarian forest, and um, we we don't even have internet there. And um, yeah, we we hide there for yeah maybe. Four days or something, and that is how, uh, how, how, yeah, that is our journey. Yeah. Because it seems that your words seem to be a good fit for their sound. I mean, on a spiritual level, I think we found each other like uh, these guys, like my family. <laughs> but uh, yeah, also like musically, like it's again, it's so natural. It's uh, uh, yeah, the poetry is maybe offering the 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 the. I'll say the depth of the experience easily to the spectator or the listener because also you break all these patterns that's uh, um, necessary in rap music to write a text or something. You have to be writing in a specific way. But just poetry is, 
giving like more space to to yeah to uh, to uh, to deliver a sound or to deliver a feeling now someone else who's celebrated for his way with words and unflinching engagement with contemporary questions of masculinity social justice and navigating a career in the public eye is belgian artist stromai his long-awaited third album, Multitude, is out now, a return from the singer-songwriter whose single, Santé, last year, celebrated the healthcare workers on the front line of the pandemic. This second single sees him wrestling with his own demons. This is L'Enfer, or Hell. On croit parfois que c'est la seule manière de les faire taire Ces pensées qui me font vivre un enfer Ces pensées qui me font Well, that's all we've got time for, but thank you to you, Abdullah and Yanas, for being with us in the studio. And that album, Between the Bullet and the Front Sight, Casting Lots, is available digitally and on vinyl. We're wrapping up the show with a new release from Florence and the Machine, who's given fans a taste of what's to come on the new album with a single drop this week called King. The band had sent some of their fans cryptic clues in the post in the form of playing cards, a nod to the title of this track. We'll leave you with a clip. Otherwise, there's more music news on our website and our social media channels too. And there's more news, of course, coming up on France 24 just after this. I need